I put a full hank of six millimeter wide binding cane in the water. It soaked for about a half an hour. Now I'm going to take the entire batch out and start weaving with it. I've laid the cane out on the floor so I can reach it handily. I got my first strand that I'm going to put in. I'm going to go under the right hand rail and I'm going to attach it back here with staples. You could use maybe just a clamp if you didn't want to use staples and catch the strand up later, but I'm going to use staples so the clamp won't be in my way. You just want to make sure it'll stay in there while you're working. What I'm going to do is come up over the first rail and across to the other side. Make sure it's back snug against the back legs. Don't want it real tight. You want to leave it a little bit loose so that you have room for weaving. And I'm going to go over twice. And that duplicates the pattern of what we had. Then I'm going to go around this rail one time. And I'm going to come to this side. And then this one's going to match the same pattern, so I'm going to go around here one time. And you want to make sure things are pushed up tight and snug to each other. And then I'm going to go around the same pattern as I started with. Two times over. And then wrap it around. And that's all I can do on my first strand. So I'm going to clamp it right here and hold it. And then I'm going to cut it off a couple inches away from the edge. And I'm going to reach down and get another strand. And you want to use your longest strands first. It just makes this part of the weaving go faster. Now I'm going to add this strand to this strand. And I want this to be on top of the one that's there. Not on the bottom, but on the top. And that's going to come into play later when we're weaving up against this piece. It'll be up visible where we can see it and it won't cause us a problem. To attach these, I use a stapler. And it's kind of hard to lay them on top of each other and get a stapler in there and get it stapled. But you can see it can be done. I usually put about two in. And once it's stapled, you want to take your needle nose pliers and you want to squeeze these flat. It doesn't take much effort to do it. Both staples. And what that does is it makes it smooth so as you're weaving, it won't catch your strands. It'll let them slide right over. Now I'm going to remove my clamp and I'm going to continue the same pattern. And I go two across. And this is the variation when I said there's a variation of the New England porch weave, sometimes you will wrap it twice there and do the same pattern. But we're matching this, the seats that came out of this chair and it only had one wrap. So that's why I'm doing it that way. During the weaving process, it would probably be faster on the weaving if you did wrap it twice on the sides here. But we don't have that option available to us. So again, I'm doing the same pattern. I'm just going to keep repeating this. You wrap it twice, and then you wrap the rail once, come across, wrap the rail once, and we've come to the end of that piece. And it's just about where we want it to be so I can use it. And I'm going to clamp that. And then I'm going to add another piece and I'm going to continue wrapping all the way until I get to the front. So we'll pick it up when I get there. Okay, I've continued weaving. I just added another piece. You can see where I've stapled it and flattened the staples. I just wanted to show you that you want to be careful as you're going to make sure that you've got the right pattern. Two, one wrap, and there's a problem right there and see that you need to go back and double check and what you need to do when you find a problem like that is take everything apart back to that point and fix it. 
you don't want to continue with the problem. And what I was going to show you is that you want to make sure that your strands are not overlapping, and that they are laying together nicely. You want to check both sides. And you can slide the strands and you can make adjustments if you need to. Now I'm going to go back and fix this one right here where I made the mistake. All right, I have gone back and fixed the problem that I had on the side. I really didn't do that on purpose for the video. That was a mistake that I made. So it worked out well that you could see, but now I have the right weaving situation. I have two across and one wrap all the way back. And I did want to mention, if you're hearing a funny sound in the background, it's springtime in Michigan, and we have our baby chicks that we keep inside until they get old enough to go outside. So they are providing the background music for us today. You can see that we've finished wrapping the entire chair. It came out evenly in the front with two strands on each side. Now if it doesn't come out evenly for you, it is fairly easy to slide these. You can push them and slide them, fill in gaps, uh, separate whatever you need to do on, on either side so that you can come out even. And my last strand I have just clamped to the front here. We're going to pick it up with the weaving as we start weaving. So the clamp is just temporary. And the clamp may even fall off occasionally. It's not really a problem. You can always maintain your tension. Now you want to put a pencil mark on the front that's exactly the same width as the back. And what you can do is measure the width between the back legs. It's about 10 and a half inches. And the front is about 14 and a quarter. So you subtract 10 and a half from 14 and a quarter. Divide that by two. Measure in and put your pencil mark. So that's the pencil mark right there. And that's where the edge of the first strand is going to come in. Now we're going to take this. And now we need to be careful that we find where the growth nodes are. And feel it with your finger if you can't see. But you always want to be weaving this direction so that the cane slides over that rather than catches on that. And you can usually tell by looking at two or three of them which direction you want to go. So you're going to start in the back and we're going to go over the first two strands and under two. And that's our pattern all the way. And you can see I'm using my one hand to manipulate the strands. I'm using my left hand to push it through. And at first it's kind of easy to get messed up, but once you get going, the pattern is pretty straightforward. And I'm going to pull that through until there's just enough on the left hand side to wrap around underneath. And I'm going to pull it up, touching the back rail, and this one is going to be right on the pencil mark. And it might move around and we can always adjust that. Now on the bottom, I'm just going to use a basket weave pattern and I'm going to go over and under whatever amount looks convenient. Looks like four, four to five. It doesn't really matter. And I got it near the front. Now I'm going to take the front. This is the strand from the where we started weaving. And you can see my my last tail is coming off the clamp a little bit. I'll just grab that back on there. And that's going to go following the same pattern as the one you did before. So it's going to slide through fairly easy. And I'm going to slide that over. And it's going to come up right next to it. And I always grab a hold of it, pull it through my fingers, keeping track of which side is up or down. So when I start weaving, I know that's correct. And we're just going to do the opposite of what we did. So I'm going to go under two and over two. And I just use my right hand to adjust the strands, my left hand to push it through. And you see I'm doing my weaving way out in the middle, away from the edge. It's a lot easier to do it out there and then slide it in as we go.
and I'm going to pull that up tight. And now we want to pull this over tight against here. You can use your fingers, but there's only so much that you can do. So I use a wooden wedge and I put it between each strand, each pair of strands. And you're going to have to watch for situations like this. You don't want it to overlap, so you'll make adjustments there. And you do want that as tight together as you can get it. You don't want to have any gaps between there. And then we're going to go around the front rail and weave again on the bottom. And again, I'm using my hands to pull it through to keep it. And we're going to follow this same pattern. I'll probably do it five times before I reverse on the bottom. But you can see how quickly it just whips through there. And I kind of pull it snug each time. Now is the time when you want to get a little more tightness in your weaving. And again, we just do the opposite of what we just did. So I went under one, so now I'm going to go over, well, under two and over two. And a quick check each time is that if you're over these last two, then you should have been under two there. So obviously I missed something somewhere. So I'm going to back up. Yeah, right here I went over two. I tend to get in a hurry and get going fast, but that was a quick check. Now I went under two, I look here, the last one went over two, so I'm probably correct. That's my quick visual check. Now it's going to be harder and harder to pull these over. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing with this wedge. But you want to make sure that they're up tight. And another scenario that's going to start happening is that these are going to start wanting to lay on top of each other. So I use an awl and just pry them apart a little bit so that they're not everyone is going to have that happen to it. But certain ones of them are going to want to overlap on you. And here's one here that's... So I use that. And I can also do a little pushing with it. It's not as handy as the awl or the wooden wedge to push with. So I'm going to keep weaving like that and we'll come back and pick it up again in a few minutes. Okay, we're about halfway done. And I just wanted to show you the progress so far. And what you want to do is you want to keep these pulled over as tight as you can so there's no gaps. And you also want to make sure these uh, pairs that are going this way don't lay on top of each other. You want to make sure and keep them separated so you'll have to continually be looking at that as you go. And I'm going to weave one row right now and show you how I do it. I just use my both hands together and it goes fairly quickly. And you can see how the pairs have kind of separated now and they're easier to follow. I'm going to pull that snug, take my wooden tool, and this is an important step because you want to have it pushed over tight, and then you'll have to go back through if you see any gaps anywhere, and then look for any of these that are crossing over each other, and you can just separate them with your finger, or you could use a tool if you have a awl like I showed you earlier. And I'll show you the progress on the bottom. I've been going five strands before I reverse direction. You can see I'm just doing the basket weave pattern. Some of the staples are being completely covered over. Some of them are showing. I will take care of that at the final step of the chair. And I'll show you why I like the basket weave on the bottom because it's just so quick and easy. Some people would prefer to weave the same pattern on the bottom. I don't see any reason for it. There, that one's done. Now it'll be cut off right here, and I'll start my new strand by weaving it all the way to here. You can see these are new strands that I've put in, and they are tight. Once you do that, they stay. This one right here, if you remember, is the original strand that was clamped on the front. That was our ending piece. 
and it's being caught up and tightened and every now and then I can just give a little tug on it and make it be nice and tight on the edge there. Okay I've continued weaving across we're up to this point and we're going to continue weaving until we get all the way up against that back leg. At that point the pencil mark in the front doesn't really matter if you hit it or not once we're woven all the way to that back leg we're done. So I'm going to continue weaving and then I'm going to fill in this front corner and then when we come back filming I will fill in this corner and show you how we do that. What I wanted to show you at this time is that it's getting hard to push this down and up with my finger every time so I'm using this knife as a tool to lift up the strands and then to push it down. It's a helpful tool. The whole process slows down at this point. But without this knife it would really be slowing down. I suppose if you had an inch long fingernails you could use those but I use a knife. Then I continue to use my wedge to pull it in snug. I'm also using the awl to make sure I've got separation. Sometimes the pairs override, sometimes they're fine. You just want to make sure they're not laying on top of each other. Then I'll flip it over and I'll show you what's going on on the bottom. You see we're still doing the basket weave pattern. And the bottom gets a little tight also. And that's where the knife can come in handy to help you. It just kind of guides the end. Then we would flip it over and go across the top again. So as I said, I'm going to go ahead and finish this side. When we pick up the video, I will be over on this side. Just wanted to mention that I am still spraying and misting as I go. You want to keep cane as wet as you can, as pliable and as soft as you can, so that things slide together. I also spray this side occasionally because I will be coming back here to do some work. All right, I finished weaving this side. I went right up to the back leg like I said I was going to. And then I started weaving in short pieces here and each one ends a little bit shorter than the one before it. And I'll show you how we do that on this side over here. Kind of moisten it up so things slide well. And you're gonna need your tools quite a bit here because it's pretty, pretty tight at this point. And this method that I do of bending it back, it does kind of break and bend it under there. So when I get to the end, I'm going to pull out this piece that I'm doing all the bending to and just cut it off. You can hear the things are pretty snug here. And I'm pulling out all this part that I bent to get in there. Make sure everything looks okay. I'm going to go over that one and under this one, so I'm going to cut it off. So this piece just stays underneath. Just like that. I'm going to push it up tight, just like we've been doing all the way across. And then that piece is in, and I'm going to do the bottom side. I'm 
Now I don't need all this great big long piece, so I'm going to cut it off just a little bit past the back. So I've got a more workable piece here. And since that is a splice, I'm going to follow the same pattern that that last one was in. So I can overlap it. I'm going to make sure this one is on top of that last strand. Like that. And then I'm going to cut it off right there. Then you go back to the top and we'll weave in another one. And that'll end there. And then each one is going to end a little bit shorter than the one before it. What you want to do is weave it as far as you possibly can like I did over on this side. You can see that one ends there, that one ends there, that one ends under there, and that's how we want to approach that. So I'll go ahead and fill in the rest of this side. Here we have our finished chair. You can see I filled in this side. This one ended here. This one made it all the way to the back. A couple other ones made it to the back. You may notice I put more in on this side. Now, as I mentioned, the pencil mark didn't matter. We just wove across until we hit the back leg, and then we started filling in the front. Now, what you want to do at the end is you want to make your you want to dress it up a little bit. If you can see this this um, loose hair sticking up, you want to take your nippers, carefully cut off all the loose hairs. You can rub it with your hand, and sometimes that lifts some of them up. And you just want to go over the whole seat and make it very presentable without the loose hairs. And then you want to look at the bottom and see if there's any that need to be cut off. Here's a tail that doesn't need to be there. It's not doing anything, so we'll cut that off. And look for other tails. And you want to trim the bottom up too. Cut off the loose hairs so they don't hang down for your customer. And you can see uh, the staples. Some of them were covered over and some of them show. You could leave them if you wanted to, but I, I like to remove them. So I just push down on it with my pliers, needle nose pliers, grab a hold of it, and pull, and it comes out. So you could go along, remove any staple that you see. The strands are tight, they're overlapped against each other, they're not going to come loose. I won't take the time now to remove all the staples, I just wanted to show you that. But there we have your completed chair.